I think you can ask anybody around this building, uh, they'll change their ratings uh, in the middle of a hearing. Uh, they'll send out text messages, they'll send out emails, uh, you know, encouraging and telling people how they should vote. Legislators. Yes, why they're in committees. About a year ago, we were talking about the Idaho Freedom Foundation and their increasing influence with legislators at the Idaho State House to the detriment and impairment of the legislative process, according to many, including the president of the Senate, Senator Chuck Winder, as you just heard last year. The IFF began in 2009 as a self-described free market think tank. These days, they say their mission is to, quote, make Idaho a laboratory of liberty. Well, when we were digging into this IFF influence last February, it wasn't easy to find too many lawmakers who felt free enough to speak to us on camera about the nonprofit or how they thought they might be a problem. They had too much on the line, they told us, and likely didn't want to be on the receiving end of a possible bullying campaign. Some of those legislators now have nothing to lose and are speaking out, like Senator Mary Souza from Coeur d'Alene. She's one of those. Senator Souza took office in 2015, and before that time, the conservative Republican says she would regularly contribute to the Coeur d'Alene press, writing about politics and such. Well, she has returned to that role since giving up her Senate seat and declaring as a candidate for Secretary of State last spring, wanting to let Idahoans know what she saw inside the State House and outside it. She says she will name names, claiming to be candid without worrying about being canceled. For example, after not receiving the endorsement of the Kootenai County Republican Central Committee in her bid for that state office, she wrote she was relieved to not get that endorsement from a group which quickly forfeited their individual responsibilities, allowing themselves to be put in a political harness, she says, eyes and minds closed and led down a shady path. Then on January 4th of this year, she called Brent Regan, the chairman of the KRCC, or KCRCC, the guy most dangerous to your voting freedom calling him the inventor of a stealth method for manipulation of candidate information. Regan is also the chair of the IFF board, and Senator Souza pro promised to talk more about the IFF later in other columns, which she did a little more than a week ago. Now retired, Senator Souza wrote an opinion piece titled Fraudulent Freedom, the IFF Files, Part 1. In it, she touched on some of the things we reported on a year ago, the ratings of bills and lawmakers and the schoolyard intimidation tactics. Our first question for Senator D'Souza, why now? Well, I've, I've seen this about Idaho Freedom Foundation for a really long time, but I've also seen them change over the years in a way that I don't respect. And so I haven't been able to say that out loud because of my position in the Senate, but now I can explain what, what they're doing is wrong. Senator Souza explained some of what was wrong in her uncanceled and unfiltered op-ed earlier this month, writing how the IFF typically scores bills before hearing much about them. Grading bills before you've even heard the committee testimony or the floor debate is wrong. And it's really important that the process plays out because every bit of that process of evaluating that bill uh, is important. It's important to all the different 35 districts in the state. Those scores, Sousa says, carry a lot of influence, too much influence, writing, I have seen this list taped to the desk of some legislators in the House. No need to think for yourself and your district, just vote the way you are told. You've seen these score sheets and these lists on people's desks. I saw it with my own eyes, yeah. And I actually uh, saw one of the lists um, taped to the side of a computer screen for one of the senators um, a couple of years ago. There are other groups that do rate bills though. But none of them grade you or bully you or push you, um, say bad things about you during campaigns if you don't vote the way they want you to. But the Freedom Foundation does all of those things. About five years ago, Sousa wrote, she tried to talk to IFF leaders about their tactics and about how they were losing credibility with the Senate. I suggested some changes that might give them better information, and they wanted nothing. They wanted none of it. Why do you think that is? Because that wasn't their goal. I believe their goal is just to control the legislature. They want to control the legislative process, and they are not interested in 
accurate information and full information about a bill, they're interested in grading it in a way that they can get more control. There are a lot of outside third party groups that give legislators their opinion on bills. But to give a bill a, a score, that's one thing. But to give a legislator a score, that's a different thing altogether. So did you ever grade highly on their scale? I think my first scores were pretty decent. Never perfect, but, but pretty decent. And they went down? Well, they did go down. Of course they did. Uh, everyone assumes that their grading methodology and the people applying that grading methodology are consistent and objective. And that's not true. I know you have nothing to lose with this, which is why you kind of have this freedom to say what you want. Yes. But what's been the reaction? Well, it's been pretty interesting, Brian, because I've gotten a lot of, of positive feedback, just a tremendous from people that I haven't heard from for years or don't know at all. And they are uh, ecstatic that somebody is actually speaking out. The only thing I've gotten from the IFF crew is mostly silence. And then one or two or three of them have gotten on social media and called me names. If I'm getting personal insults, I, re I, I like that because it means they can't address my, my issues, my policies. If they can't explain themselves or rebut anything that I have said, then it must all be correct and they have nothing to say except call me sour grapes or rhino or whatever the, the silly name of the day is. So what does the IFF have to say about all this? Well, the same as they told us a year ago, and pretty much what Senator D'Souza has heard, silence or nothing. Senator D'Souza assured us these op-eds are not sour grapes. She willfully retired from the Senate, and she said she is being vocal, not out of spite, but out of a duty to educate the public, believing they need to know how this system at Idaho's State House is working or how it should work. At the end of her IFF essay, Senator D'Souza says she has much more to expose, and she told us, there will likely be several more chapters to share from her IFF files.